I'm super, super excited. Not sure if you can see this right here. This is an SD card slot on a MacBook. Today is gonna be the ultimate comparison. Let's do this. Oh my God, I'm actually so impressed with the M1 Mac. <laughs> Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be going over these three machines. Now, let me introduce them to you. Obviously, we've got the brand new Juicy 16-inch here with the M1 Pro chip in it. Over here to the left-hand side, we've got the 2016 15-inch with dedicated graphics. And in the middle, we've got the revised version of this version, the 2019 16-inch. One more thing on the table is this mouse and keyboard set. This does not control these three machines. It controls an M1 Mac Mini, which is actually sat over there in my console table. Now we're gonna be doing some tests to compare rendering videos to see which one of these devices does it faster. I wanna preface this by saying this hasn't been sent to me. I have actually owned and bought all three of these machines and these have actually been handed down to our editor, Jed. Hey Jed. So these are going to be basically my raw thoughts of how Apple's laptops have progressed literally since 2016, which is here to 2021 on the right. First off, we can see that huge notch. Is it an issue? I don't know, is it? I would definitely choose the one with the notch just because I like the fact that the screen goes all the way up to the top bezel. And it's actually really satisfying to me that the bezel on the side is the exact same thickness as the bezel on the top. And that isn't the case here, as you can see on the 16 inch or the 15 inch back from 2016. Feels much heavier and it feels thicker and that's because it is. If I'm actually to run my finger across these three, these three laptops, you can see that there's a bit of a height increase here between the 15. And we've got an even greater bump here between the 2019 and the 2021, which shows that Apple are really putting substance over style. style. This is super, super thin. So is the touch bar as well. Now, obviously we've got a raised touch bar here. It looks like the actual keycaps itself, but then we've got no touch bar whatsoever. You know what? I'm not gonna be one of those YouTubers that goes ahead and says, oh, I'm so happy that I've got rid of the touch bar because I didn't not like it, but I also didn't think it was that useful. It gets slightly mushier with each generation. The 2016 is definitely the worst. It's really, really cardboardy and clicky. Gets much better with the 19 and then the 2021 is just the icing on the cake. However, it's not mechanical-like, which is what it says on Apple's website. Slightly misleading. It's a nice, mushy laptop keyboard, and we'll leave it at that. The only other thing is, it has a black background, which makes this entire section of the laptop, I think, in my personal opinion, look slightly more professional than these two predecessors. Now, on this new one, it starts to get pretty spicy because we've got this SD card reader right here. Something that I use, and I think a lot of other professionals use in their daily lives. No matter what they're doing, whether it's recording video, recording audio, taking pictures, yada, 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 you've always got stuff to import to one of these devices. This is a welcome change. Thank you, Apple. One thing I am sort of happy that they've brought back, but I'm also slightly disappointed with at the same time is this HDMI port. So obviously there's a lot of talk, and we'll get onto this later, about the new laptop having a ProMotion display which goes up to 120 hertz. Now unfortunately, it's not a 2.1 port, it's only a 2.0 port, which means you're capped at 4K 60, and that's the same whether you're using like a Thunderbolt dock or something similar like that. You've got external displays, they're gonna be running at 60 hertz, not 120. Real, real big shame in my opinion. And then obviously we've got the return of MagSafe, this port right here. Now this is Apple's sort of magnetic charger, so it means that if you kick it, it will automatically come out and not pull the laptop with it, smash it to pieces. If you're in a pinch and you wanna use USB to charge, you can do, it's got power delivery built in on all of the ports. Really nice to see. The only thing that's physically different on these laptops over the three models is the fingerprint reader, which is something you're gonna use every time you log on. It's now a button that actually doesn't press in, but it has a circle or a ring around the middle, which obviously reads your fingerprint, much different to the square design we had on here. Notch, the mouse, it runs through here. A lot of people were asking, what, what, what's it gonna do? Is it just gonna bounce off it? Can you even go into it? I think the display actually just goes underneath the, the actual whatever the hell's going on in there, not Face ID. It's just a 1080p camera, as to which you can see the quality uh, on screen now. Hello, this is the new MacBook. Obviously, because it has Apple Silicon in it, it's doing all of its processing, so it should look significantly better than this laptop, even though it's the same sensor. It's just not got the same processing in it that Apple's silicon chips can do. And then here, we've 
for our laptop from 2016. Now we can also, whilst we're doing this, do a microphone test. 2016. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 2019. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 2021, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. This is a really echoey room in here, so let us know in the comments how you think it does. This is the brig for the new 21 M1 Pro, or M1 Max. It is slightly bigger, I just wanted to make you aware of that. Obviously, it's USB-C on this side, and in the box you get the braided USB-C to MagSafe cable, but obviously you can just use a USB-C cable and charge off that brick. Uh, I'm looking at the text down here in Premiere Pro, and it is definitely much sharper. Uh, on the newer machine. However, that's not to say that it's not sharp on our older machines. It really, really is. It's just sharper on here. However, again, it's not night and day. If you're upgrading from either of these machines just to get a higher PPI, don't think you'd be really that impressed. Where you will be impressed though, is when you start to move these windows around the screen. So if I just grab the top bar here and I move this around like this, it's just nowhere near as satisfying is doing it on this machine. Now obviously our cameras will not do this any justice whatsoever, but you can just tell that moving this around, it's liquid smooth, it's running at 120 hertz. No, no questions about it. It's a nicer experience. Even just moving the mouse cursor here, it's nicer. It's almost easier to position it on the newer laptop. Right, now's our first test of many. We are going to do a render test and a battery test in Final Cut Pro, rendering the same video on both our 2019, 2021, and an M1 Mac Mini. Gonna click render and then see what the battery percentages are and which one completes the task first. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. Rendering. New ones on 19, old ones on 16. Ooh! 19, 21. 43, oh! <laughs> so our Intel machine, lost a grand total of three to 4% battery, whereas the new M1 Mac, to render the exact same video, only lost 1%. It was also the fastest out of the three. We got 133 on the new MacBook. On the M1 Mac Mini, we got 143, so an extra 10 seconds. And then on our mid machine here, which is the i9 Intel, this took one minute 37. Four seconds more than our M1 Mac, which proves that our new machine is more powerful than the i9 and more energy efficient. Okay, now the real killer though is gonna be a render test in Premiere Pro. This is a full on eight minute project of a video that's upcoming here on TechFlow about some awesome, really cheap CCTV stuff. Now, we're gonna be able to open this project on all three of our machines right here. So even on our 2016, the exact same project and it's open on the M1 Mac 2. Three, two, one, and we're off. we're off. We are off. Oh my God, I'm, I'm actually so impressed with the M1 Mac. Jeez. That's on 10. <laughs> Come on. We've got absolutely no sound. This is whirring away. Okay, so these results are quite pleasantly surprising. So obviously the, the new laptop, the new M1 laptop with the Pro chip in it obviously takes the cake here. We've got a render time of 419 versus 618 on the M1 Mac Mini, 510 on the old i9 MacBook Pro, and then 749 on our 2016 model. More impressive for me though is the battery percentage difference. So on the new MacBook Pro, it literally took 4% of power to render that entire video, which is insane. It took 21% on the 2019 model, and on our 2016 model, it took a whopping 33%. Now obviously these aren't all brand new laptops. This 2016 has had Hammer and some more, so obviously you've got to take that into account. But this has been really interesting to see the differences between these two models. And to be honest, I've just done this really for me to see if I'm going to be keeping this machine around. So I really hope that it's helped some of you out there in your buying decisions, whether you're going to pick this up for creative use or not. But there you guys go. That's been my first look or first test look at the brand new Apple Silicon in these laptops. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below and also let me know what you want to know for our final review for a month's time. But for now guys, my name's been Alex. This has been TechFlow. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.